and deception. So gear up. I pray that you are uh, in tune and that you're ready for tonight. We're going to have a word of prayer and then read wisdom and knowledge belongs to you, which are our scriptures for every day. And then we're going to read the seven works of grace, which are your bill of rights. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this time and we thank you for this opportunity. Lord God, we submit ourselves unto you as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is our reasonable service. I ask you, Lord, right now, that there is anything, if there's anything that you find in me that is not worthy unto your will, that is not of righteousness, Lord God, if I have transgressed against you, I ask you, Lord God, that you remove those things, that you forgive me and lead me in a place of righteousness. Lord God, right now, we decrease that you may increase, and I thank you in advance for releasing a word unto the church and tonight. I thank you in advance for using, Lord God, your servant, Lord God, to deliver what you would like to say unto the people. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scriptures for every day, wisdom and knowledge belongs to you. Colossians 1, 9 through 10. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding, that ye might walk worthy of the Lord unto all pleasing, being fruitful in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Ephesians 1, 17 through 18, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Isaiah 11, 2. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him, the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. Be filled with God's fullness. Ephesians 3, 17 through 19. That Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith, that ye, being rooted and grounded in love, may be able to comprehend with all saints what is the breadth and length and depth and height, and to know the love of Christ, which passes knowledge, that ye might be filled with all the fullness of God. Colossians 2, 8 through 10. Beware, lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit, after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. For in him dwelled all the fullness of the Godhead body, and ye are complete in him, which is the head of all personality and power. Acts 1 and 8. But ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in Judea and in Samaria and into the uttermost part of the earth. Expect a move of God suddenly. Romans 8 and 11. But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal, natural, earthly bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. The seven works of grace, your bill of rights in Christ. Number one is repentance, atonement, sorrow. Number two, conversion, transformed, changed. Number three, justification, validation, legalization. Number four, sanctification, consecration, purification. Number five, baptism of the Holy Spirit, the beginning. Number six, liberation, deliverance, freedom. And number seven, perfection, excellence, and faultlessness. Amen. Those are our scriptures for every day, along with the seven works of grace, which are your Bill of Rights in Christ. What we're going to share with you tonight is I believe it's, we, we are to 
teach to the body of Christ and, and, and to the believers. And that's what we're going to share with you on tonight. And I'm, I'm sharing this uh, on on yesterday up in prayer. Uh, I, I began to pray and the Holy Spirit uh, revealed and began to show me uh, that the spirit of deception, it was open and wide and no longer ashamed. You know, at one time, for, for a long time, we, people would do things and it's, it, when you are a believer, first of all, you cannot um, you don't, you're not possessed by demons. Now we can be under the influence when we're not obedient to the things of God. And so there are some times in our lives that we do things and, and, and they're not of God. They're not of righteousness. And we think because we're doing them in secret that nobody knows. And so we think that we have gotten away with it, but we are in a time now we are in a season, Christ is soon to return. And so it is a time like never before, just like last week we talked to you, the church, to, to remind you that the gifts that God has placed within you, there is need of those gifts in the local assembly, which you are part of. So do not think that those gifts are just yours, but they are meant to share and to help one another. We need one another. But I want to take it a step further just to just to remind us because I do not want us to be deceived. I do not want us to yet do things which are the acts of sinful nature and think that we're going to get away with it. What I saw and what the Holy Spirit was revealing unto me is that deception is no longer trying to hide. And what that means, and, and it also said, deception is no longer ashamed, which means that whatever things that they were doing in secret, deceptively, they're now going to do them openly with no remorse. They're no longer shame, ashamed. And I saw it just growing and it was big, it was big, it was big, it was big, it was getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And I began to cry out and pray for the body of Christ because I, I don't want us to be deceived. I don't want us to uh, if, be in a position where we are blinded to the truth of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I pray that our eyes are open to the truth and that we receive that word in our hearts and that our hearts are changed and that our minds are renewed. And so tonight's Bible study, we're, we're going to get into the word of power over Satan and demons. And we're also going to take a look at how God used his prophet. He sent, he, he got his prophet and took him in, into a vision and showed him what was going on in his church in Jerusalem. And so this right here, I am the first partaker, I'm not exempt. It is a time that we all examine ourselves to find out that we are, examine yourself to find out if you are aligned with the true Father which is in heaven. And if there is anything that you are doing that is contrary to the will of God, it is time that you stop. Resist the devil and he will flee from you. You are no longer under the power of sin. You have been given liberty through salvation of Jesus Christ through your faith. And so put those things away from you. Practice them no more. Because I don't want you to be deceived. I do not want you to think that you're getting away with something and you're yet going to return back to Christ when he returns. I don't want you to be deceived. It would be a dishonor and I would be in trouble with the Holy Spirit if I do not share this word with you on tonight. So let's dig into the word of God. We are sent to talk to the believers, to the body of Christ. We cannot be deceived. 
Taking a look at power over Satan and demons. And I do have our scripture up on the screen. We're going to take a look at Mark, the third chapter. And I'm going to start at the 20th verse through the 27th verse. And then I'm going to go over to Ezekiel, the eighth chapter. You know, sometimes we think we're getting away with something, but God will call his prophet. He will call his intercessor to reveal just what's going on. And I believe that's what's going on today. Mark, the third chapter, 20th verse through the 27th verse. It says, and the multitude cometh together again so that they could not so much as eat bread. And when his friends heard of it, they went out to lay hold on him, for they said, he is beside himself. And the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He hath Bezalbub, and by the prince of the devils casteth he out devils. And he called them unto him and said unto them in parables, How can Satan cast out Satan? How can Satan cast out Satan? It is impossible. And so if I'm gossiping, I cannot bind the spirit of gossiping in anybody else. Why? Because I'm doing it myself. I got a beam in my own eye. And I cannot teach, and I'm going to use me as an example, that is the best policy. So that I do not get in trouble with using anybody else. And so if I have not been delivered of a thing, if I'm continuing to do it, I can't bind it. I can't encourage you to come out of it. I can't even talk about you because I got a beam in my own eye. Satan can't cast out Satan. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. See, I don't want us to be deceived. I do not want us to walk uh, in the acts of, of sinful flesh. I don't want us to walk in our flesh and be deceived and blinded and think that we're pleasing God. Just because we come to the church and we clap our hands and we raise our hands and we say hallelujah and, and we feel good for the moment, let me tell you something. If the heart has not been changed, converted and the mind renewed and, and when we no longer follow after the flesh, but we, we, we follow after the spirit. We do things that are pleasing unto God and we become obedient unto him. If I'm still doing the same old thing, the tears that I cry, they're not moving God. The good feeling that I had, it only lasted for a moment because he's looking at the heart of me. I'm going to read verse 24 again. And if a kingdom be divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. Verse 25. And if a house be divided against itself, that house cannot stand. I don't want us to be deceived. I don't want you to be blinded by the truth and think that everything is okay. It is time to examine ourselves. It really is. The time has passed. There's no more hiding. There's no more getting by. Let me tell you something. God is revealing and he is uncovering like never before. And so do not get caught continuing in that same path. Go ahead and get yourself, get your house in order. Remember, this is the temple, and so we must have it in order. Verse 26 says, And if Satan rise up against himself and be divided, he cannot stand but half an end. Verse 27, No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods, except he will first bind the strong man, and then he will spoil his house. 
So now we're going to talk about the power that you have. You do not have to continue in that same path. You have been given the power and authority. We talked about that also. When we've been talking about the keys to the kingdom of heaven. You have the keys to the kingdom of heaven. So I want to I want to definitely dive into that. You have keys to bind on earth. You also have the power to cast down thoughts and high imaginations that want to exalt itself against the power and the authority of God. We we have to cast those things down in ourselves first before they're cast down anywhere else. And that is 2 Corinthians the 10th chapter. Remember the weapons of our warfare, they're not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. One of the primary emphasis in Mark's gospel is Jesus' overriding concern to defeat Satan and his demonic powers. This is phrased as binding the strong man, which is Satan, and spoiling robbing his house setting free those who are enslaved to Satan. This power over Satan is especially evident in the driving out of demons or evil spirits. Let's take a look at demons. The New Testament frequently refers to those who are suffering, suffering from Satan's oppression and influence because of the influ, indwelling of an evil spirit and to Jesus's conflict with demons. In the Gospel of Mark, for example, numerous such encountered are described. So we know there are countless encounters that Jesus had. I'm going to take a look at Mark 1, 23 through 28 to give you an example of one of those encounters. That's Mark 1, 23 through 28. And there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit, and he cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? Art thou come to destroy us? I know thee who thou art, the Holy One of God. See, even, even demonic spirits, they know who Jesus is. And you as a believer who, who have been given the authority and the power, the keys to the kingdom of heaven, he knows who you are too. He knows what you're going to tolerate and what you will not tolerate. He knows what you're going to go along with and what you're going to shut down. He knows in advance. He's just going to test you. And so guess what? If I bring a little gossip your way, I just want to see if, if they're going to engage in it and, and how far I can get. They knew who Jesus was. They know who you are. But what are we doing with our power? What are we doing with our authority? Verse 25 said, And Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. You see that authority? Jesus utilized his authority. And he has given us, the church, the believers, the faithful that same power and authority. Verse 26 says, And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned themselves saying, What thing is this? What new doctrine is this? For with authority commanded he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about them. So, when the influence of, of deception, uh, division, when it comes to, 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 to sit beside you to get into your thoughts, and you bind it, because you have been given the authority and the power to bind on earth as it is in heaven, when you use your authority, they're not ready for that. 
And, and, and when you act upon that authority, see, we can say something with our mouth, but if our actions are still uh, indulging those demonic influences, listen, they're going to say, they're going to say it with their mouth, but they're still engaging. So we can't just quote the scripture. We got to live the scripture and act upon the scripture. Demons are spirit beings who have personality and intelligence as members of Satan's kingdom and as enemies of God and humans. They are evil, malicious, and organized with different levels of rank and delegated authority under Satan. Demons are the power behind idol gods. So, to, so that to worship false gods is essentially to worship demons. The New Testament presents the world as estranged and strange from God and seized by Satan. Demons can and often do live in the bodies of unbelievers and use their voices to talk. They enslave such individuals and influence them toward evil, immortality, and destruction. Demons can cause physical healings in the human body, although not all sickness and disease are the result of evil spirits. Those, and it goes on to, to talk about that. Let's look at Jesus and demons, and then I want to look at believers and demons. In his miracles, Jesus often attacks the power of Satan and the demonic. One of Jesus' clearly stated purposes in coming to earth was to bind Satan and to set those enslaved by him to be free. Jesus' binding of Satan accomplished in part through his driving out of demons and more completely in his death and resurrection. That shatters the power of Satan's realm and restores the power of God's kingdom. Let's take a look at believers and demons. Scripture teaches that no true believer, see, this is what I want us to all come into the truth about. Scripture teaches that no true believer who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit can be demon possessed. The Holy Spirit is indwelling in the inside of you. That doesn't mean that at times we aren't disobedient. We have a conscious decision to make when we receive the instructions by the Holy Spirit and they are given by God to follow through to completion of those instructions or to ignore those instructions. But the Holy Spirit is, is indwelling in you. Now, I do know for those who were in service on Sunday and, and also on the live, Apostle Allen just ministered the word over in Exodus 23 and 20, talking about how we should not grieve the Holy Spirit. But let me read this again. Scripture teaches that no true believer who is indwelt by the Holy Spirit can be demon-possessed. The spirit and demons can never live in the same body. Let's go over to 2 Corinthians 6.16. That's 2 Corinthians 6 and 16. It says as follows and what agreement hath the temple of God with idols for ye are the temple of the living God as God hath said I will dwell in them and walk in them and I will be their God and they shall be my people here Paul argues that a born-again believer is the temple of God a place of habitation for the Holy Spirit 
Although an evil spirit cannot live alongside the Holy Spirit within the true believer, there may be circumstances in which an evil spirit lives in an individual who is actively in the process of conversion, but has not yet been fully regenerated by the spirit. Conversion at, may at times require the driving out of demons from a person who sincerely desires to follow Christ. Just like going back to Exodus 23 and 20, where God said to the children of Israel that he would drive out the Havites and, and, and the Hevites and the Canaanites. We can take those things as our enemy and our oppressor, and we can also take those same examples for some things that we need to be delivered from. He's saying that I will drive those things out from among you, which meaning I will deliver you. And so we all know what we need to be delivered from. Let's act like we, let's not act like we are perfect because we're not perfect. We have some things that we need to be delivered from. We have some, we all have some agendas, some things that are not pleasing unto God. And, and in order to return back to him, in order not to be blinded by the truth and deceived and thinking that you're on your way to heaven, when in fact, there's some hidden secret sin that we think nobody knows about. God knows. And if we continue in that particular path, when we stand before him, He's, it's going to be revealed. But long before he sends his prophets and his intercessors to warn us. To get it in order. And so let's, let's, go, let, let's get ourselves examined in the name of Jesus. Demons may, however, influence the thoughts, emotions, and actions of Christians who have not been delivered from old strongholds, who fail to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. I'm going to read that again. Demons may, however, influence the thoughts, emotions, and actions of Christians who have not been delivered from old strongholds. You know, those things that we don't want to deal with. Those things that we, we put aside and, and we think because, um, oh, I, I, I don't deal with that crowd anymore. No, you have not dealt with the actual sin and stronghold of it. You just not arguing with them over there. But let me tell you something. You arguing with somebody else. You're causing division somewhere else. Just because you move from a crowd does not mean you have been delivered. It is a spiritual thing. The heart has to be changed. Yet I practice that thing no more. I pursue peace rather than wrath, rather than uh, arguing and fighting and division. I pursue peace. And when a thought, negative thought against anybody enters my mind, listen, I'm going to tell you about me. I tell me, first of all, that's none of your business. If a question enters my mind concerning somebody else's business, I tell Angel, that's none of your business. Mind your business. I don't even want it to, I don't even want it to settle and to get in my spirit where I'm thinking about some things that don't even concern me. Ain't none of my business. And I begin to bind the thoughts of negativity and meddling and gossip and, and things like that from entering into my mind. I go back and quote the word of God. But I put myself under the subjection, under the authority of the Holy Spirit. It is something that we we put into practice, just like we we plan. Let me tell you something. We haven't been saved all our life. Some of us plan to sin. You plan to do some mischief. You planned it. You followed it out. Why can't we plan to do what's right? Plan to seek the truth. Plan to follow righteousness. 
We are in a day and a time now that it is let your yea be yea and your nay be nay. If you're going to stand, stand for righteousness sake. There is no more time or opportunity to straddle the fence. There is no more time. Listen, listen, there is no more time. He is doing an uncovering and a revealing and there is no more time. Get your house in order. You do not have to fall under the influence of demonic spirits concerning your thoughts, your emotions, and your actions. It is because we have not been delivered from old strongholds or even failing to follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. Jesus promised true believers authority over the power of Satan and his cohorts. On one occasion, evil spirits declared, Jesus I know, and Paul I know, but who are you? And that's over in, in Acts 19.15. In other words, once again, if I'm gossiping, listen, I can't stand before you and, and to pray for you and say I bind that spirit of gossiping in you when I got gossiping in me. Uh-uh. Like he said, Jesus, I know Paul, I know, but who are you? Guess what that spirit gonna say? Who do you think you're talking to? Because you gossip, you were just gossiping a couple of hours ago, you know. And when you leave here, so soon as you leave here, you know, when the phone rang, you're gonna be right back at it. So I don't have to move because I entertain you too. Let's just be real, let's be real with this. By knowing Jesus and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of his suffering, we can comfort and break the power, we can confront and break the power of that demons exert over us and others. So how do we do that? We have been, first of all, we have been given the power and authority. We pursue peace. We bind that spirit, but we also, we got to make sure that we got some clean hands and a pure heart that that's not something that that we do and we indulge in why do you think some people uh they they pray for certain things they if they haven't been delivered don't don't start praying for somebody else to be delivered i know we're supposed to pray ye one for another but before we cast that thing out over there we, we need to be clean our hands need to be clean we can't be judgmental using the word of god this is called spiritual warfare. It's different from just our, our normal prayers. This is spiritual warfare. Scripture says these things come but by fasting and praying. Some things, some strongholds, things of deliverance, come but by fasting and praying. We got power. I want us to exercise it. God's kingdom, as disciples in God's kingdom, we are called to wage intense spiritual warfare through the power of the Holy Spirit. Let's go over to, let's go over to Luke, the fourth chapter, 14 through the 19th verse. And I am going to get over to Ezekiel because I want to show you in the word of God how he will send his prophet and show him things that are being done in secret. We're going to go over to the right now. We're going to take a look at Luke, the fourth chapter. I'm going to start at the 14th verse through the 19th verse. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. So see how he returned. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. And there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. 
And when he had opened the book and found the place where it was written, see, this is what's been given to you and I. The spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind. That's some spiritual sight to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. And see, we, we, we have a mandate. We got a purpose. We're the church. We're submitting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable, which is a reasonable service. We got to break those, that, that thing down. And this way we can set others free from the powers of darkness. So when we're blind to the truth, we're actually in darkness. And the day that you hear my voice, harden not your heart. The day that you receive the word of God, it is our sincere prayer that the word that we release on tonight it's falling on good ground. You might not receive it in your spirit tonight, but along down the line, it could be a week from now. It could be two weeks from now. It could be in the wee hours in the morning. And these same words will come back to you because the Holy Spirit will bring back all things into your remembrance. And you'll begin to examine yourself by the power and authority of the Holy Spirit. That is my prayer. That you'll begin to examine yourself, not against what I said, but against what the word of God said. So that you're not deceived and caught up with the world. We, we, listen, we live in the world, but we are not of the world. We are spiritual beings and our alignment should be with the word of God and what he calls holy, not the world. So no, I can't do any and everything can't be any and everywhere. We gave a word, uh, wh what is the position of your spirit? Where is your spirit? Be ye holy, for I am holy. Lay aside those things, lay them aside, lay them aside. According to the parable in Mark 3.27, spiritual conflict against Satan involves three aspects. Declaring war against Satan according to God's purpose. And we just read that over in Luke 4, 14 through 19. Entering Satan's house, any place where he has a stronghold, attacking and overpowering him by prayer and proclamation of the word of God and destroying his weapons of demonic deception and temptation, carrying off his possessions, delivering those who have been held captive by Satan's power and giving them over to God so that they may receive forgiveness and sanctification through faith in Christ. So now, and, and Lord's willing, we're, we're going to dig more into this because it's, it's not a, not a one time teaching until we all come unto the unity of the faith. The following are individual steps we should take in this process and recognize that we are not in a conflict against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces and powers of evil live before God fervently committed to his truth and righteousness have faith that Satan's power can be broken in any specific area of his dominion and realize that the believer of his powerful spiritual weapons given by God for the destruction of Satan's stronghold Proclaim the gospel of the kingdom in the fullness of the Holy Spirit. Challenge Satan and his power directly by knowing and using the authority of Jesus' name. I ain't say going my name. 
Jesus' name. Use the name of Jesus. Don't use it in vain. Because when you call upon him, you get his attention. When you call on the name of Jesus, demons tremble. Because they don't know what the believer is going to do. They don't know what the believer is going to say. And so when you call on the name of Jesus, don't use it to play. It has power. It has authority. It has the anointing. And so if you use the name of Jesus, know that you are called, you, 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 you got a weapon in your hand. You got a weapon in your heart and you got a weapon in your spirit. So don't use it in vain. It is authoritative. By using God's word, the word of God, it is nigh thee, even what we preach. It is in our mouth. It is what we're saying unto you now. You have the access to the word of God. I never want you to rely on just what I said. I want you to pick up the word of God for yourself. And I want you to study the scriptures. You might not understand but the Holy Spirit is there. He is your teacher. He is your guide. Read a chapter at a time. Read a verse at a time. And let the Holy Spirit to reveal unto you what that scripture is saying. Get an understanding. Lead not unto your own understanding. Acknowledge him. In all your ways, acknowledge him and he'll direct your path. Ask the Holy Spirit to open up your eyes and help you to understand what you're reading. To comprehend. Do not be deceived with the Holy Spirit telling you that you can't understand what's being said. Yes, you can. That is a lie from the pits of hell. It is a spirit of deception. So you will not pick up the word of God. Another spirit of deception. It says, oh, that's born. I want to read that. That is a lie from the pits of hell. It's so much food and, and, and learning in the word of God that covers every, every aspect of our life. So the enemy will tell you. Oh, that's boring. You don't want to read that. The enemy will tell you also you don't have time to sit and read. The enemy will tell you you got all this stuff to do. You so busy. Oh, I read later. I read a little bit. I Listen, that is a spirit of deception. Because the enemy does not want you to get into the word of God. The enemy does not want you to know that you have access to the word of God. And it is right here. And you take it in and you take it in and the more you take it in and, and it's living, it, it is alive within you and it becomes alive and it rejuvenates you and it revitalizes you. It restores you. It is a revival in your spirit. That is what the word of God is. And you take it in, you read it and you take it in. And when you hit those hard times, when you hit those temptations, guess what? Now the Holy Spirit has something to bring back to your remembrance. Oh God, I thank you. The Holy Spirit now has something he can bring back to your remembrance. You read that a month ago and, and you didn't think about it after that. But at the right time, you see, he'll always show up on time. He'll bring back what you read. He'll bring back the depths of what you read and it'll reside in your spirit and that what you thought you were going to do that what you planned to do which was not pleasing unto him will stop you that is a power that you have been given the word of god and so you have power over satan and demonic spirits it is the word of god for the sake of time i want to go over to ezekiel because I want to demonstrate to you in the word of God, when we think that we have gotten away with continuing to walk in sin. And we think uh, because it's just me, nobody going to tell on me because I did it all by myself. Um, nobody else knows. Um, I didn't tell nobody. You know, that that is the world's way that if you do something by yourself, you ain't got to worry about nobody telling on you because there are no witnesses. But we serve a God who sits high and he looks low. And when we do not receive the warning, when we do not take heed to the warning, and he did this, he, he's doing this to save us. He loves us this much. 
the heel reveal. So over in the book of Ezekiel, the eighth chapter, and I, I'm going to start at the first verse, and then I, I'm going to get over to a certain area. And it came to pass in the sixth year, in the sixth month, in the fifth day of the month, as I sat in mine house, and the elders of Judah sat before me, that the hand of the Lord fell there upon me. Then I beheld in lo a likeness as the appearance of fire, from the appearance of his loins even downward, fire and from his loins even upward, as the appearance of brightness as the color of amber. And he put forth the form of a hand and took me by a lock of mine head. And the spirit lift me up between the earth and the heaven and brought me in the visions of God to Jerusalem, to the door of the inner gate that looked toward the north, where was the seat of the image of jealousy, which provoketh to jealousy. And behold, the glory of God of Israel was there according to the vision that I saw in the plain. Then said he unto me, Son of man, lift up thine eyes, now the way towards the north. So I lift up mine eyes the way toward the north, and behold, northward at the gate of the altar, this image of jealousy in the entry. Now this is in the church. He said, Therefore unto me, Son of man, seest thou what they do? Even the great abominations that the house of Israel committed here, that I should go far off from my sanctuary, but turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations. And he sent me to the floor, to the door of the court, and when I looked, behold, a hole in the wall. Then said he unto me, Son of man, dig now in the wall. And when I had digged in the wall, behold, a door. And he said unto me, Go in, and behold the wicked abominations that they do there. So I went in and saw, and behold, every form of creeping things, an abominable beast, and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And so see, he said, he brought him to the door that had a hole. And when he looked in the hole, it was another door. Hidden things. Hidden things. And we think, don't nobody else know about it. Those thoughts, those imaginations. You know, we can smile at somebody, but our thoughts are far from it. We can say something out of our mouth, but our heart and our thoughts are far from it. We can say something out of our mouth and our actions do not line up with what we say. Those type of things, those hidden things. We can say out of our mouth, hey, how you doing? I'm so glad to see you. And in our mind saying, oh, I wish you'd get out of my face. I want to see her today. Those hidden things, those abominable things. Things like that. That's deceptive. It's the little thing that we pay no attention to that will cause us to walk under the influence of deception. And I don't want you blinded. I want to reveal unto you the truth. Body, mind, and soul must line up, become one. We talk about being unity, uh, becoming one and unity in the spirit with those we fellowship with, but we first have to be one in the spirit, body, mind, and soul. Your heart, your mind, and soul got to line up with the Holy Spirit that's indwelling in you. Whatsoever things are holy, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things that are of righteousness, whatsoever things are of a good report, think thee on these things. Verse 10 says, so I went in and saw and behold, every, every form of creeping things and abominable beast and all the idols of the house of Israel portrayed upon the wall round about. And there stood before them 70 men of the ancients of the house of Israel. And in the midst of them stood Jehanez, the son of Shaphan, 
with every man his censer in his hand, and a thick cloud of incense went up. So they thought that they were they were hiding. They thought nobody knew them. They thought nobody could see them. It was just them. And so what the Holy Spirit was showing me with this spirit of deception that was wide open and no longer ashamed was recruiting others to be a part of it. To be a part of the deception. Tricking people to think that that's something they can get away with. Tricking people saying that they can give a false report. They can say false things and it's okay. Deception is no longer ashamed and no longer trying to hide itself. Verse 12 says, Then he said unto me, Son of man, hast thou seen what the ancients of the house of Israel do in the dark? Every man in the chambers of his imagery? For they say, The Lord seeth us not. The Lord hath forsaken the earth. Let me tell you something. I know it's chaos going on, but the Lord has not forsaken the earth. He has his church, his people, his chosen generation, his royal priesthood upon the earth, ambassadors of Christ, to live holy as he is holy and to set the captives free. But the deliverance starts in us. First, charity starts at home. You know, when we talk about charity starts at home, yes, it is the physical home, but let's go back to the house. Charity starts at home within you. Verse 13 said, he said also unto me, turn thee yet again. See, he wasn't done revealing. And thou shalt see greater abominations that they do. Then he brought me to the door of the gate of the Lord's house, which was towards the north, and behold, there sat women weeping for Tammuz. Now Tammuz was known as a Babylonian god of vegetation. Then said he unto me, Hast thou seen this, O son of man? Turn thee yet again, and thou shalt see greater abominations than these. And he brought me into the inner court of the Lord's house, and behold, at the door of the temple of the Lord, between the porch and the altar were about five and twenty men with their backs toward the temple of the Lord and their faces towards the east, and they worshiped the sun towards the east. Then he said unto me, Has thou seen this, O son of man? It is a light thing to the house of Judah that they commit the abominations which they commit here, for they have filled the land with violence and have returned to provoke me to anger, and lo, they put the branch to their nose. Therefore will I, I will also deal in fury. Mine eyes shall not spare, neither will I have pity. And though they cry in mine ears with a loud voice, yet will I, I will hear them. He will not hear them. And so we're in a time now. We cannot, we shall not, we will not. hide the truth it is time that we get our houses in order listen it's no longer meant to say tomorrow's not promised to you the next minute is not promised to you it is time for us to grow up and stop playing church The time is near, the time is now. But what he showed me, what he allowed me to see was deception is no longer hiding. It is, it is no longer ashamed. It is wide open. And when we think that we're hiding, he will send his prophet, he will send his intercessor to show just what we think we're getting away with. So let us not deceive ourselves and let us not deceive anybody else. But be ye holy, for he is holy. You have the power and the authority 
over Satan and demons. You have the Holy Spirit indwelling in you. Do not allow it, do not allow your thoughts and your emotions and your actions to be controlled by the things of the world. Ask yourself, will this please God? Does the Holy Spirit tell you already? The Holy Spirit convicts us immediately. Now we can either submit, repent, and don't do it again, or we can ignore the Holy Spirit, which means we're grieving the Holy Spirit, which means we are disobeying God. Amen. I pray that what we share with you tonight has been food unto your soul and an enlightenment unto your heart. Take it seriously. Stop thinking I got all this. Oh, I got plenty of time to get it right. No, we do not. We do not have plenty of time to get anything right. Do not let this moment pass you by. Let us pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. We thank you for your son. We thank you, Father God, for your love, for giving us of your son. And Jesus, we thank you for dying on the cross for us. We thank you for praying to the Father to give unto us the Holy Spirit that dwells in us. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for comforting us to for revealing unto us God's word and what God wants to show us. We thank you for bringing the word of God back to our remembrance. We thank you, Holy Spirit, to, for leading us and guiding us into all truth. We thank you right now that a heart has been changed, that eyes have been opened spiritually. You are no longer blinded to the truth. It has been revealed unto you. And we pray now, we have an expectation that you will lay aside every weight that your your heart has been changed, that your eyes have been opened, your mind has been renewed, and that you will follow the things of Christ and not after the things of this world. We thank God for your deliverance today. We thank God for your deliverance today. You have been set free in Jesus' name. You have the power and the authority to live victoriously and in liberty in Christ Jesus. Lord God, I thank you. I thank you for Apostle Allen. I thank you, Lord God, for how you're continuing, Lord God, to just lead and guide him and strengthen him, Lord God. We thank you for a refreshing and a renewal. We thank you for Pastor Allen today, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for guiding her, Lord God, in the name of Jesus. Continue, Lord God, to let your will be done in their lives. We thank you for Apostle Wilson, Pastor Wilson, Lord God. We thank you for the protection of your love and your grace. We thank you, Lord God, for our youth pastor and our deacon and deaconesses. We thank you, Lord God, for the body of Christ. We thank you for every member, Lord God, of your body, not just a faith outreach deliverance church, Lord God, but the body of Christ as a whole. We thank you, Lord God, for this chosen generation. We thank you for your people, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, that their eyes have been opened to the truth and that they are no longer under the influence of the spirit of deception. We ask these things of our Father which is in heaven in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, amen. Please be sure to join us Sunday morning for 11 o'clock a.m. service. We will stream live. We will be at the sanctuary. And uh, I do believe we'll be sending out a notice concerning Friday night service uh, being in the building. We will send out a notification on behalf of Pastor Allen. Once again, we love each and every one of you. And as we say, as I always say, stay encouraged encouraging others along the way. Have a blessed night, everyone.